Hey peeps, Jess here, and today I'm trying out Locale. Locale is a California-based brand doing nationwide shipping of snacks, but instead of being like Gold Belly where you buy like a dozen cookies or a platter, you can instead buy individual items from as many restaurants as you want, which I am totally here for. Some of just want one cookie instead of a dozen cookies. So I have a bunch of items here from Craftsman and Wolves, Cinderella Bakery, and Pasta Sisters. I thought I'd try them out and then talk about my thoughts and pros and cons of using Locale. So that, let's dig in. We're starting with Craftsman and Wolves and their oatmeal raisin cookie. Craftsman and Wolves is known more for their layered desserts, their Queen Amon, which we'll be getting to, but just means you want a good cookie. It just smells of cinnamon, oats, and raisins. It smells really homey. Cheers. Without going fancy, this is about as good as an oatmeal raisin cookie can get. Like, objectively just wonderful. You've got a soft, chewy, tender cookie. And it's still tender. It's been in transit for like 24 hours, but still tender, soft. Wonderful chew from some really soft raisins, pops of oatiness and earthiness from the oats, and just a little bit of sugar and cinnamon all the way through, bringing it a little bit of caramelization, a little bit of chew, hominess, all the good stuff. It's even got a little crispiness on the edges, a little toffee sweetness, so good. I will say, given that this was, I think, five or six dollars, clearly you could probably make some at home for much cheaper. But that's not the point of this experiment. The point was, can I get a cookie and can I get it to be tasting pretty good? And it succeeds. My problem is now I want to eat this rather than doing the rest of the review. Next we have our creamsicle queen amon. If you haven't had a queen amon before, I hope you get to try one. It's a laminated dough similar to puff pastry with layers and layers of sugar in between until it becomes really caramelized and buttery and sugary and just so good. You can see here just how caramelized it is. So pretty. I mean, it just smells like butter and there's a light orange scent to it and I kind of feel bad eating a Queen Amon every time because it's just so pretty. Well, cheers. Whoa. So the Queen Amon is a touch dry and honestly a touch sticky on the bottom, which it was not frozen or refrigerated. So I kind of expect that. Like this is the kind of thing that I'd rather just get fresh or have it baked at home just because, well, it's sugar and there's a lot of sugar caramelization in any warmth or any water gets near it. It's going to be a sticky mess. It's crunchy from the exterior sugar on top. It's buttery. It's flaky. The filling though is an absolute cream school flavor. It's just this huge burst of almost fresh orange juice to it. Really bold and sharp. And the center of the Queen Amon is an orange curd. I thought it was a custard at first because it eats like a custard. There's that kind of density of a really thick custard, but this makes way more sense and is also far more shelf stable. My only request would be to have it frozen instead and baked to order so you wouldn't have any of the stickiness that I got in transit. But I mean, you get similar if you're driving it home from San Francisco. Queen Amon just don't travel. The layers are gorgeous though. So next we have Cinderella Bakery and their Napoleon cake, which is layers of puff pastry and vanilla cream with a whole topping of goodness and crispy crunchies. I thought I was getting like a chunk of a cake somehow, but when it arrived, it's a whole cake. There's so much cake. I will be having cake three times a day just to get through this. It's also really heavy, like deceptively heavy. Cutting this is really tough. <laughs> Smells like butter and almost like cornflakes, that buttery, just caramelized flower scent. Well, cheers. So it looks crunchy. Nothing is crunchy in this cake. When you normally have a Napoleon or a Milfoy, it's going to be highly caramelized puff pastry in thin, shatteringly crisp layers. This is more like they made an icebox cake. I'm not sure how it is in store, so it's hard to compare. But the layers here are soft and tender, actually, and kind of a nightmare to even get a clean cut through, but it's delicious because there's so much caramelization in the puff pastry layers. You still get a lot of flavor, a lot of butter, and a lot of sugar. It's almost like, imagine a Costco croissant layered with pastry cream and then made into a cake. That's almost how golden buttery this tastes. And the exterior are more pieces of puff pastry, and so it's also softened out, and you've just got a whole lot of tenderness going on. You could imagine your Russian baba making this for you and giving you like a big ol' wedge of cake and then a big ol' thing of hot tea and you'd be like, yeah, I'm home and I'm chillin'. And that works. My request would be something to offset how sweet it is because it is so filling. This could get you through the winter. And so yeah, if I think if I was having more later this week, I'll probably have it with hot tea, like an Earl Grey or a black, something really, really strong, just so that your palate gets refreshed between bites. It can get a touch sweet too, but again, if you just had a strong tea, you'd be good. I do wonder how this is in the restaurant though, because it's so hard to cut through, but it arrived cold and on ice, and so I don't think it's that different. 
but I can see it being a bit crisper if you bought it fresh from the store. So last, certainly not least, we have Pasta Sisters and the Sfolatelle. I know I'm mispronouncing that. It's a flaky pastry that is filled with ricotta and orange peel and it smells just really wonderfully buttery. I get a little bit of orange already. It came frozen and so I popped it out of the freezer and had a really, really long bake actually. It said 20 to 25 minutes. I did more like 30 to really get any color on this at all. Like the edges got pretty burnt early on, but the rest of it took quite a while. I also gave it 10 minutes to cool as the directions recommended, but it's still quite warm <laughs> and a little greasy from the baking tray. I love how delicate the layers are. It looks kind of like a clam when it was unbaked and as it baked, they opened up and it looks just so cool. I've actually never had one before, to be honest. This isn't a pastry you can get in Seattle very easily. So I'm super curious to see how this goes. I'm hopeful that I didn't overbake it. Very worried about that. It smells very sweet, like reminds me of powdered sugar and almost a marzipan almondiness. Well, cheers. Mm, that's a satisfying crunch. So the pastry, I don't know if you can see how transparent this is, is shatteringly thin and crisp. It reminds me of phyllo pastry in that super duper thin shattering effect. It's not a lot of flavor to the pastry itself. It's kind of floury and kind of buttery, but it's not the point of it. The point of it is to be a shattering vehicle for all the ricotta, which has orange peel and also I think some kind of an alcohol in it because I'm getting a bit of an aromatic note that feels more like an orange alcohol. If you haven't had ricotta before, this ends up eating almost like a soft set custard. It's creamy. It's actually a little bit light because ricotta is not going to be as dense as a vanilla pudding would be. And then you've got just all of the orange essence coming through in all the various ways from the candied orange peel to whatever alcohol they've got going on here. It just feels like there's an orange blossom water or something going on. So there's more than just orange peel sharpness. Yeah, if I think if you like orange pastries and you like phyllo dough, you are going to adore this. It's just really good for a breakfast treat. It's a small thing, as I was finishing this Votelle off camera, I noticed that there was an increased cinnamon note. It kind of reminds me of the essence of like Red Hot with that warming sharp cinnamon, but it's not really strong. But if you're not a big cinnamon fan, you might not like the treat as much when it's a little cool. Just eat it hot. I didn't taste that at all when it was hot. So first I want to give my thoughts on the desserts and then I want to give my thoughts on locale because I have a lot of thoughts. Of the desserts, they were all solid. I have trouble picking a favorite. This was really good. I think my favorite probably is the Crabs and Wolves cookie. Just it's a really, really well done oatmeal raisin. You can't go wrong with that. And this volatile is right there and I want to eat it right now. I really do love the giant Napoleon cake. It's been so much fun to eat off camera. And the Queen of Mon, I just think it should have been sent frozen because the layers got a bit tacky, but it was still delicious. So with all that, would I order from Locale again? Yes. Oh my goodness, yes. While I was prepping the second section of this video, they released ube croissants from Hanabi and I want them so badly. I'm so annoyed they're not in this video. Like, Ube almond croissants. Just... But that's for me. For those of you who are considering locale, I made a giant list. <laughs> so first, the plus sides. I think the minimum spend and the ability to order single items is really great. There have been a lot of times when I've wanted to review a brand from Gold Belly and haven't because I didn't want to buy a dozen cookies or a whole pie. I just wanted a little bit of something to test. And on top of that, the minimum spend for these brands is normally like $50 to $70. So being able to do all of this under $70 total was a great option. On top of that, they have some really coveted brands on there. Like I wanted to cover Harry's Berries, but I'm allergic to strawberries. On top of that, they've been offering items that you can't get through other options. Like Crafts and Wolves is on Gold Belly or direct from them, but they don't normally sell the Queen Amon anywhere else. That's really awesome. And there's a $5 shipping fee, which is great. It's flat. That's wonderful. On top of that, right now as of filming this video, they've been regularly offering $15 off coupons for signing up for their mailing list. And when I signed up for the mailing list, I got a $20 off coupon. So it's been a great deal all around. Now let's talk downsides, which are really some downsides and some quibbles. One, I really wish there were ways to buy more items. So either you buy like the set amount, which is usually like a dozen, or you buy one, there's no in between. I love the ability to choose if I want to buy a single or a dozen from various items. Also nationwide shipping is pretty new to them actually, so make sure your set's nationwide, or you might find out the item that you wanted isn't actually available. And also on top of that, they're kind of still having some technical difficulties as they work out being a new brand for doing nationwide shipping. And actually one of my items did not arrive. I did order a morning bun from Crafts and Wolves that was not in my box. 
On the flip side though, I did talk to them same day and I got a same day reply and they've offered to send me a coupon so I can include that if it's here by time of editing. So after this video was initially filmed, I did receive the refund on the missing item, no problem, it was super easy. The thing is, I filmed this enough in advance that I got a second order with a second missing item and a second really easy time with customer service and a refund. On one hand, I am really glad that the customer service team was so great, they were super on it and super fast, and I have confirmed the refunds have gone through. On the other, I have two orders with missing items in them. I am hoping this is just them having some growing pains with doing nationwide logistics, but I'd rather be honest and include it than not include it, even if the customer service was really great. Also, I'm on the West Coast, so I'm not sure how shipping's gonna be for the East Coast, if it's gonna be fast enough or effective enough, because like the cookies were shipped room temperature, but the Svolatelli was shipped frozen, and I kind of, for that matter, would like the, everything to be shipped frozen, just to not risk any kind of temperature issues or food safety issues. You also have to consider if the waste and the spend are okay with you. While I didn't have a huge amount of waste on the food, there was this big thing of dry ice in my bag and a big ice pack that I now have to figure out what to do with. And also it's worth checking to see if the price is a good deal for you for the item versus buying it direct from the maker. A good example of that is that Manresa Bread sells the Queen Amon for I think the same price as they do on Locale, but through Locale you only get one Queen Amon and through them you get two. But if I bought the Queen Amon through Manresa, I'd still have to pay an extra 25-ish dollars in shipping so locale is still cheaper, it's just worth figuring out for you if the price is really worth it. For me personally, the positives far outweigh the negatives, it's just that those are the thoughts that I was going through as I was ordering, so I wanted to make sure that you had them to think about. So those are my thoughts on locale. Are you interested in trying them out? I'd love to hear all your thoughts in the comments. If you're interested in more nationwide treat delivery, I've got a review on Goldbelly right here. And with that, I'll catch you next time. Later! I still have three quarters of a cake to eat. It's a good doom.